Ladies and gentlemen, this is the new Doug Car, a Land Rover Defender. And not just any Land Rover Defender, but a 1997 US spec Land Rover Defender. These things are incredibly rare. Land Rover sold the Defender 90 in the US for just three model years over 20 years ago. And good ones can sell for up to $70,000. And mine is a good one. It has just 63,000 miles and it was beautifully restored by my friend David, who specializes in restoring these Land Rover Defenders. It's been fully repainted. The interior has been redone. And it's completely rust free. It has new lights, new parts. It's in absolutely perfect condition. So what do you do the first week you pick up a brand new, professionally restored, freshly painted, mechanically excellent Land Rover Defender? You take it off roading, of course. But first, you have to get there, and that meant two hours on the interstate, which allowed me to assess the Defender's highway driving capabilities. The thing driving this car on the highway is uh, it's slow and the steering is vague and it only has a four speed so it doesn't really kick down and gear and pass people. It's incredibly loud. The top kind of is always banging against the, the roll bars. The fuel economy is horrible. I mean 10, 12 miles per gallon, something like that even on the highway. There's some rollover risk because it's so high and this one's lifted just a little bit. The heater doesn't really work all that well. It only blows on your feet or on the windshield, not directly onto you. But other than those things, it's really a great highway cruiser. And if you spend a lot of time on the highway, I highly recommend this car to you. But eventually I made it to Roush Creek Off-Road Park, which has miles of off-road trails. All right, we're off-road in the Defender. I'm not sure if you can tell there, but I started off a little nervous. I picked up my freshly restored Defender just four days ago, and I was already off-roading it. What if it breaks? It's worth 70 grand. What if I mess it up? More on that in a minute. First, let me introduce you to my friends. In the Jeep, that's Ben. I met him on Instagram when I borrowed his family dog to propose to my fiance. It's a long story. Next up, those are my friends who work at Land Rover Cherry Hill, where I maintain my cars. Yes, that's the new Range Rover Sport Supercharged with 21-inch wheels. Finally, that's John and his brand new three-week-old Ford F-150 Raptor, which I recently reviewed. It's an interesting group. There's four vehicles in our group, and three of them have temporary license plates. <laughs> With that in mind, we started things off relatively easily with the Defender cautiously leading the way. But eventually things got more challenging and more rocky. We're doing this. This is Kate. This is doing it. Yeah, it's going great. And this. Oh, oh, ah, that's really awful. <laughs> This thing is great. <laughs> I, I, for once, feel like the most capable person of the off-road adventure. <laughs> and it's got a check engine light on, which I think enhances the experience of having a Land Rover off-road. Yeah. Next, we came up to some mud where everyone else had some fun. And 
unfortunately, the Defender was too slow to really join in. Although, I did get to take it through a rather large mud puddle. <laughs> well, that was, uh... That was awesome! That was fun once. <laughs> Suddenly, I started to forget this whole $70,000 thing and I was just having fun. And the Defender was doing a great job with all the trails. It was really in its element. Next up, we encountered this, which, like everything off-road, looks a lot harder in person than it shows up in the video. The Raptor and Jeep didn't want to try it, but I gave it a shot in the Defender. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh my god, what angle is this? <laughs> Keep going, keep going. Yep, going down, yep. Wait, the roof just hit like a branch on the side. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And we made it out. It wouldn't be the Defender's only test. You're good, you're good. Dude, that thing's a monster. <laughs> you don't need horsepower. For example, here there were two choices, an easy path on the side or straight through this rutted, rocky, muddy hill. Everyone else chose the easy path. The Defender... Next up was the Defender's hardest test, a steep, rocky hill. Bro, I, this might not look that crazy on camera when I watch it later, but from the cabin, it looks like, oh, we are going up a serious hill. With serious rocks at a crazy angle, and it's just crawling up, but it's, it's doing it. Eventually, we encountered some big, rocky ruts. The Raptor made it over, slowly, but the Defender... Another attempt also proved fruitless. Now, I could have switched to low range or engaged my differential lock, but instead, I decided to get through this the old-fashioned way, backing up for more power. And once again, the Defender was free and on to the next obstacle. Amazingly, the brand new Range Rover Sport was able to get through that same area with a lot less drama. In fact, despite its thin tires and slow pace, the Range Rover Sport never seemed to have much trouble with anything. By then, we had been off-roading for about three hours in some pretty tough conditions, so we decided to head back. So there you go, that's the Doug car, 1997 Land Rover Defender 90, and <laughs> we've already put it through its paces. I'm really proud of it, I had a lot of fun, and most importantly, 
nothing broke. As expected, the Jeep handled everything with ease. The Raptor also had no problems despite its larger size, and amazingly, the Range Rover Sport battled through everything thanks to its impressive electronics and good driving. But my new Defender, older than every car here by 15 years, impressed me most. It never got stuck, it never broke down, it never even showed any signs of faltering. It's gonna be a fun year behind the wheel. That was a that was a bad decision. <laughs>